Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone, uh, and welcome. Uh, my name is Abraham Almarek. I work on Hue, and I'm a contributor on Scoop. Hi, I'm Romain. Uh, I work on Hue mainly. Um, we're here to uh, take a look at what Hue can do and how we can use it as a starting point for exploration and real-time interaction with Hadoop. So, so what we're going to start off with is describing what Hue is. And then I'll pass the torch to my colleague, Romain, here. And he'll give a demo uh, of how to use it. OK. So what is Hue? Well, H uh, Hue is the Hadoop user experience. And that's a, it's actually a picture of the HBase browser within Hue. Uh, how many folks are uh, familiar with Hadoop? Show of hands. Oh, just about everyone. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> something that we focused on a little bit uh, over the past few months is uh, making HBase a little bit more usable and looking, being able to like, really interrogate your data, look at your data, and even uh, mutate uh, some of the, the cells in HBase. And this is what it looks like. So um, Hue sits on top of the, what I would consider uh, the Hadoop ecosystem. So that means uh, Beeswax, Hive Server 2, Impala, HDFS, Uzi, JobTrack, <coughs> MapReduce, Scoop2, uh, HBase, Pig. Uh, also, uh, something we'll throw in there is Search. Clutter released uh, a, a search service, which uh, we also have a user interface for. Um, so Hue is essentially a collection of apps, and we have an app for each one of these services. So if you could imagine that uh, Hive, you have, you have a, a query that you need to execute. Sometimes you'll use the, the command line interface, or generally you would use the command line interface, right? Well, Hue exposes an interface that makes it really easy with syntax highlighting, et cetera, which, which Romain will show uh, in a little bit what that looks like, which makes it really easy, really nice, and you can even save your queries. OK. So, why a UI for Hadoop? Well, so I would imagine that most people are not engineers, A, uh, and the power of Hadoop can be used by just about uh, anyone, ranging from data scientists to students to people who are completely new to Hadoop. So if you're an engineer uh, who knows nothing about uh, uh, Hadoop or big data, and you're very interested in learning more about it, well, I imagine that Hue would be the perfect system for you to get ramped up on. Also, if you're a data scientist at, I don't know, Facebook or maybe a startup, and you have a lot of useful data, Hue has, Hue has many apps that would assist you in that. Also, all of these apps are, in some sense, interconnected. And it makes it really easy to use all of the components, or excuse me, many of the components in the Hadoop ecosystem. So as you can see, uh, it makes it easier to use the power of big data. So, what is an app in Hue? Let's uh, take a step back uh, and think about what applications are in general. So if you look at your phone, uh, I don't know if you have an Android or an iPhone, it doesn't really matter, there's a concept of an app or an application. It's an entity within, your, uh, within your, your phone that allows you to do things, performs a certain function. That's exactly what an app is in Hue. There's, like I said earlier, there's an app for uh, several of the components in the Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, HBase, Uzi, Scoop, Hive, Pig, HDFS. Um, also, um, it provides kind of a cohesiveness uh, and makes it a lot easier. Um, that's kind of the goal, by the way, of you to make uh, to make it much easier to use the components in the Hadoop ecosystem. So, how is it how is it built? What uh, what does it look like in terms of uh, the internals? So. It's your typical uh, web application in some sense. We strive for single page layouts. So that means we have a very heavy front end. We use Knockout JS, jQuery, uh, Rowdy JS. Um, also, we have Mako templates, which is specific to Django. Um, so on the back end, we use Python and uh, Django. It's a Python and Dran uh, Django driven website. So the selection of Django is actually quite interesting. Um, the apps that were uh, mentioned uh, previously are actually Django apps, or extensions to Django apps. So it's, it's very easy to build your own apps. Uh, all you have to do is uh, run this command uh, in the command line, uh, build and bin hue, create desktop app, followed by the name. And it will create a predefined template that you can just fill in the blanks, and you have your own app. Um, has 
Anyone here built a, a, a Django application before? Just a quick show of hands. Uh, so it's, it's rather easy. Uh, this, uh, the ramp up costs are very minimal, in my opinion. Uh, so should be, I would imagine, no problem. So uh, going back to the back end real quick, uh, for the web servicing layer, we use Spawning or Cherry PY. It's one or the other. Uh, these also handle all of your static resources, uh, such as uh, images, CSS files, and JavaScript files. Also, we have client interfaces for uh, many of the Hadoop, compo uh, Hadoop, excuse me, Hadoop components, uh, such as HDFS, WebHDFS, and the Job Tracker. So what other batteries are included? Well, there's an LDAP backend. Uh, what that means is that you can authenticate using an LDAP, uh, an LDAP server. Or uh, we have an OAuth backend. We also have Spinago. And it's very, it's very extensible. So if necessary, you can write your own very easily. Uh, so authentication and authorization lives in Hue. Um, what that means is users and groups and how you access apps within Hue all live in Hue. Hue has its own database. And within that database, we have uh, a set of users which you can import from LDAP or some other system, and it'll be managed within Hue. Uh, as said earlier, resources are serviced through Hue. We support multiple browsers and multiple databases. That means uh, SQLite, MySQL, Postgres, and Oracle. Now, we're also internationalized in over eight languages. And one thing I really want to uh, stress is the uh, kind of cohesiveness of the apps, or excuse me, not cohesiveness. The word I'm looking for, I believe, is how will the apps integrate with each other? Let me give you a quick example. So if you could imagine you have I don't know, a MapReduce job that has executed, and it creates a bunch of files on HDFS then it's really easy in Hue to just click on the, uh, the, the job output and go directly to those, uh, that output in HDFS. Uh, it becomes super easy, right? That, that would be kind of, uh, kind of difficult in and of itself. You would have to go through the, the normal job tracker UI, et cetera. But within Hue, it's just one click. So we, we really strive for the user experience to be improved. And that means the data scientist, the noob, I mean, even developers, developers like myself, I like using it because it makes my life much easier. Let's see. So Hue has uh, over 2,000 commits. It's an open source project. Uh, you can download it from gethue.com. We do a lot of video tutorials on there as well. So if you need kind of a, an introduction on how to do things in Hue, how to work with all of the different components, that's all on gethue.com. Um, it's a pretty mature project. It's about four years old, uh, and there's a lot of there's a lot of supporters. Uh, there's 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 a lot of there's a lot of people in the community. Our mailing lists are just uh, the, so many people uh, comment on the mailing lists. It's it's absolutely wonderful. And so, uh, without further ado, uh, to see all of this in action, I'm going to pass the torch to my colleague Romain. Uh, thank you. So the best way to show the product. I mean, one of the best way is to show it in action. So I'm going to show like a demo starting from some Yelp data of re reviews of restaurants. And so you, or you can use Hadoop with you on various query tools like Pig, Hive to process, get some insights into the data. So I'm going to switch to a browser. So when you log in into you, that's the web UI. Uh, we support different backends. Uh, you can use LDAP or OAuth or even build your custom authentication mechanism. Here, I'm just in the file browser. So people are a bit familiar with Hadoop, uh, but that's the file system where you can see all the files. Uh, and so you can browse like a regular browser, like go in the files, uh, use like quick navigation. We support the HDFS trash, so you can even restore like files, like in a real uh, uh, operating system. Uh, you can directly preview images of, of files or even PDF without having to download them, then look at, the, op look at them uh, on your OS. Uh, so I'm going to upload a Yelp 
data file. So there's a Yelp data set challenge. I'm just taking one of these files. So in one click, I can upload it on, uh, on the HDFS, so directly from my browser. Um, here is a file. So for the demo, it's only 200 megabytes. Uh, as you can see, it is a JSON file. If, we, if you go on the website, you will see the schema of the website. But it's basically a series of votes for one uh, restaurant with the final writing on a bunch of text for the review. When you upload and want to process data, most of the time you need to do some ETL processing and clean it a little bit. So here, I'm going to clean a bit, escape some uh, parts of the text, and transform it in a like, TSV format to make it easier to be processed by IFPIG Impala. So for doing this, I'm going to use the PIG editor. So PIG is one of the query tools for Hadoop. Uh, it's a bit lower level than Hive. So in PIG, if you are familiar with PIG, so we provide a nice editor with syntax highlighting on auto completion on the HDFS of pass. Uh, then you can also auto complete PIG keywords. If you do a mistake, you won't highlight, so you will avoid typos. You auto complete, auto complete sorry, al aliases, so I can reuse my alias B. Um, to save some time, I'm going to load a script that is going to take in input the file, the JSON file that I was I just uploaded. Load it with a JSON uh, loader, which is native in PIG. And that I'm going to explode like the map of ratings, put each vote into a column, and do some string ex escaping on the text of the review, a little bit of cleaning, then just dump it. So then I can just click. It will run the script. So it's submitted for, for uh, you, submitted for you, and will print the various logs. Uh, the page refreshes automatically, show you the progress. Uh, you could look, if you're familiar with MapReduce, to the various Ma MapReduce's jobs created by the pig. Uh, same, it's a it is a live update with a one click to get access to the logs, which is pretty neat. You don't need to go in the command line, then go on the uh, job tracker URL, get your job, get the logs. It's all into one click. Um, the pig script is finishing. Uh, same, we put links. For example, if I would click on the job, was on the job, this script created one map produce job. I could click and just go back to the previous page I was about. We also put links on the pass, HDFS pass. So I was loading this file and dumping it as a TSV on the HDFS. So I can just directly click on it. See, it was just run uh, right now. And again, I can just quick look at it in the browser directly. In this case, you see everything is TSV now. So now I have a TSV file, but I want to do actual queries on it. A good way to, to do is to use uh, one of the like main query tool, which is called Hive. Uh, so it's, it's like SQL on top of Hadoop. Before, um, I need to create a table that represents this data. So you comes with a wizard helping you to create tables. For example, I just give like the name of uh, sorry, like the name of the new table I want to create. I just put one of the files that I want to import. So you is a bit smart and it will give you like a preview of what the new table would you look like. So I can just quick spot that my separator looks good. So then I will just next put names in the columns and to save some time, you have like some nice shortcuts. You can provide a list of column names and they will be already refilled. Sometimes you need to double check the types of your data. And I have two sample of rows that lets you evaluate if your schema looks correct or not. So then I create the table, and I can still use like the 
table browser app in you to look at my tables, look at manually created table, even look at a sample of the data. I can quick sort the sample of the data. Go or go directly to another column. So we try to improve the horizontal scrolling. When I have my data, uh, I'm switching to the Hive editor, which a little bit like Pig provides syntax highlighting. We get uh, the tables in your currently selected database, or you can switch between databases. So here are the fields in, in the review table. So for example, I could get the text and just get five records. Then in one shot, I can same as pig. It will submit the query, report the progress. I, on the left, I have a link to the map reduces jobs. And here is the data. We support various, uh, like all the, we are compatible with all the Hive properties. So if I want, I could upload and use, for example, custom UDF. So I can add a bunch of jar in my script, then define a function, my upper. So we have a blog tutorial about this one, but it basically will create a new two upper that transform two upper string text. So I'm going to apply my UDF on this one and re-execute it. And same, we have the live progress. You can share query, you can save queries, and like you see, you can upload, uh, use UDF quickly. A nice example is to use, go back to my uh, more interesting example, if I want to get the top 10 coolest uh, reviews of restaurants, that would be a script. Uh, I could also use Impala. So Impala is like a super fast Hive which is developed by Clodera. I'm going to show you like the same query, how to get the top, te top 10 coolest restaurants and show you the difference of speed. So here I'm executing the Hive. Here I'm executing the Impala. But I think, oh yeah, I forgot to create it. Okay, so that's a good story. I'm going to switch on this one. And uh, yeah, so because Impala is, is not on this machine. Um, so yeah, so that's a quick and easy way. You is used a lot for Hive. Now you have support for the new Hive server too, and a new product called Sentry uh, that has full, provides full security. So that's for Hive. So a nice query tool. Um, then because it's SQ, no SQL, uh, I'm going to demo a little bit the new HBase table. So I don't know if many people are using HBase, but we added a new UI. For example, we can list tables in various clusters and provide a nice uh, search, which is just searching on top of uh, HBase. So we provide, this is a new table where for each restaurant, so the row key is the ID of the restaurant or the name, for each day, I'm going to have the average rating of this restaurant. So day by day, I will have counters that sh shows uh, the average. So you can scroll, you can also horizontal scroll. So HBase is like a sparse, sparse database so we have a, a nicer layout where we can aggregate. You can inline edit data directly without having to deal with HBase API or in the shell. Uh, we have wizard for creating table or adding new rows. Uh, the coolest part, part of this app is really the, uh, the search bar. So we provide an autocomplete of the row keys. So for example, could select Apple Cafe. It will directly pick up the records and do a scan. 
But when the five next rookies after Apple this rookie, I will just add plus five. Then I will get five more data. I can use column filtering, meaning if I want to have only for the months of March, only data. Uh, I could also do, oh, I want from March to end of the year. So put a higher rookie. And to show, I could also do until July. So let's search into HBase directly. Uh, you can upload, up, sorry, you can upload data. Uh, we, have, we can visualize different type of data. So if I go in the cell editor, I will see the history of my cell. I could upload pictures or any binary data. So it's showing up on the other window. And uh, yeah. So for people who want to have a quick look at their data, we support also Avro. You can preview PDF, like in file browser. So it's a pretty nice app. And everything is standard and just sits on top of HBase. You just need the thrift service in HBase to be running. Then you just point to this URL and you will, the table will just show up in your browser. And then I'm going to finish by the last app, which is a search app. So I have all these reviews and ratings. Uh, I could use Solar on top of HDFS to in ingest all of my data, define a schema of the fields, think like Google search, uh, and then search for my ratings. So by default, I created a simple schema uh, with metadata. For example, a bit like the Hive table with like a bunch of ratings, a bunch of text. But I want to search for it, and I want to customize a bit the look and feel. So that's all the fields in my index. But we're going to show that we can create something a bit more good looking. For example, I want to add the text of the review. We show a preview of what the actual search will look like. Uh, we could add, for example, also oops, the, the rating, which is called stars, on the left. And go, like, use the WYSIWYG editor to add some bolding. We support HTML. At the end, it's just a HTML a snippet of code for each result. If you want to do advanced styling, you can insert a custom style or your custom JavaScript. You can add solar facets. So facets, as what you see sometimes on the left, if I want to have, uh, or like in Amazon, like range categories of job of products or ratings. You could add, for example, like a rating facet. Rating. Then I should add it. And then I go back to my search. And you see now I have the customized view. If you play a bit more with it, here is an example of a uh, template you could create with like direct click links to Google Maps. I want just restaurants with five stars. So we will put a filter on this. I, I will look for sushi, for example. So I will uh, highlight the search term. So you can build your custom search engine. And it, depending on your use case, uh, it's a pretty powerful what to do, many people knows SQL, even more people knows how to search. So that was it. Actually, it doesn't change in Excuse me? Three what are the three different colors? Yeah. So here in the Yelp, for each review, people can uh, rate if the review was helpful. They then they can say if the restaurant was cool, if the 
atmosphere our restaurant was funny. It's like we put some colors to show them up a little bit more. But you could put your style, your colors, what you want. And that's it. So getyou.com, we have a list of videos that shows in more details what I just presented and uh, on also blog post. Uh, and yeah, if you have any question, feel free to ask them now or follow up or on the user list. It's pretty active. Thank you. <laughs>